I think I need to know more about machines, how they work. Sure. It's really important when you're starting up a cafe to make sure that you've got the right machinery. We've got David here, and he's a bit of an expert, so he can run you through that in a bit more detail. Thanks, Simon. Amy, the, the first thing that you need to ask yourself when you're setting, your, setting up your cafe is, do I want to go to semi-automatic or do I want to go to fully automatic? And when it comes to the espresso machine, they are the, really the two main differences. And to make it very simple, if I was to use the analogy of a light switch, a semi-automatic is like a light switch. You turn it on, the pump activates the water and the hot water passes through the coffee. And this will stay on for as long as I want before I turn it off. So to a certain degree, I'm in control of what's happening to the coffee. I can control the lengths of it. Semi-automatic. What we've got in front of us here is a fully automatic. Fully automatic will have more buttons across the panel and these buttons will be pre-programmed. So when you push one of the buttons, a certain pre-programmed amount of water will pass through the coffee and it will turn itself off automatically. So you can pre-program depending on your cup size and what you're trying to achieve, whether it's an espresso in a small base or whether you're doing a latte. Semi-automatic, you do a lot of the work yourself. Fully automatic, the machine will turn itself off for you. And that's really the first decision that you need to make. Holy, there's so much to know about how this machine works. Yep, there's lots of different components and different names for everything. What do you think you know so far about the machine? That they're the buttons. Yeah, they're called mm, they're called dosing buttons, really. What else do you know? This is the handle. Yep, it's most commonly called the handle, but the actual name for it is a porta filter. A porta filter, right? That's it. Anything else you can point out that you know? The steam wand. Yep, that's it. And how do you turn it on and off? Uh, one of these. Yep. Which one? The one with steam. That's it. This one's the steam knob. Basically, this one's for turning the machine on and off, so you don't really need to worry about okay. that one. What else? Do you know what this is called? The group head. That's it. This one here? It's where the hot water comes out. That's it. And up top here? That's the warming tray. Basically, the idea of this is that the residual heat from the machine will rise up, will heat the cups, so when you're making beverages, it'll keep the beverages hot. Over here, do you know what these two things are for? That's a tamper. That's it. Basically, this is, yep, that's your tamping mat. So you put the porter filter on top of the tamping mat to protect the bench. And this here is the old uh, grinder. That's it, the grinder. So there's different components to the grinder. This one here is the bean storage unit. Yep, some people call it that. Some people call it the hopper, like me. <laughs> this, is, this, is the, this is the grind unit, or the grind unit, the grind chamber. Um, then you've got the, the uh, handle here, which you pull to dose the coffee into the porter filter. Do you know what this is called? The um, docking station. Yep, very Star Trek. Landing zone. Yep. It doesn't really have a name, okay. but the idea is that you put your porter filter in here, dock it in there, so it's nice and secure for when you dose the coffee into the porter basket, porter filter basket. Milk jugs, two different kinds. Do you know what the differences are? One's got a spout and one doesn't. That's pretty much it. This one here is called a bell jug, and this one here is called a spouted jug. Um, we'll run through a little bit later what the differences are. And finally, what's this one? The bin. Pretty much, but it's really the bin just for your coffee. It's called the dump bucket. So can you tell me why the grinder is so important to making the espresso shop? Yeah, sure. A lot of people make a lot of noise about the grinder and how important it is, and rightly so. Basically, your grinder has got one function, and that is to cut the coffee to make it either finer or coarser. Why do you need to make it finer or coarser? I'll try and show you. It's a little bit difficult to explain. But let's say, for example, that you've got coarse beans. Let's say, for the, let's say we're, using, we're looking at this, and we'll say that's coarse beans in there. And this is a bit extreme, but I'll dose some coffee into here to show you. Let's say that's fine, okay? So the main difference between these two is that the water that's going to extract through the coffee for this is going to go through the beans a lot faster than it would through this, obviously. I'll engage each of these porter filters into the group head and I'll push a double shot for each one just to demonstrate the difference between a fine grind and a coarse grind. The coarse grind is on the left, which I'll push first, and then I'll show you the fine grind. 
And here are your beans and your hopper. So during the day, the beans can take on moisture and that can be affected by the humidity. And you may have to change your grind anything up to five, 10 times a day. Some people only have to change once or twice a day. It really depends on the cafe, the atmosphere, all that sort of thing. But it's extremely important to make sure that you monitor that variable to ensure that your, your coffee is being extracted in the correct manner. Every, different, every grinder is slightly different and the way you adjust the grind is also slightly different. But the general principle is that you've got two sets of teeth inside the grinder. They're facing each other. Pushing them closer together will grind the coffee finer, pulling them apart will make it coarser. How do you adjust it? Every grind is a little bit different. With this one, it's got a collar that spins around like this. On other coffee grinders, it's got a little knob. You turn left to right. But they're all about the same and that they use one principle, which is that the numbers are dict dictate how coarse the grind is. So for this one, a bigger number, a bigger grind. A smaller number, a smaller grind. Okay? So Eamon, if I was going to start making coffees, what should I think about when I use the grinder? There's a few things you need to think about. Um, for example, if I was making coffee, it'd be slightly different to you because I've got, for example, different size fingers. So when I'm making my mountain, it's probably going to be a little bit bigger than maybe when you're making a mountain because you've got smaller fingers. So when I make coffee in the morning when I get to work, compared to when I make coffee in the afternoon, what's happening if I can pull a perfect 25 second shot in the morning and then it goes really fast in the afternoon? Well, there's a couple of variables. Usually it comes down to the beans and the humidity. Humidity in the air in the morning may be quite different to the humidity in the afternoon. And because beans, whether they're ground or the whole beans, will absorb moisture, that'll affect the way that the water runs through them when you're extracting coffee. So you may need to adjust the grind up or down depending on the humidity during the day. So if it's hotter, make it finer? Generally speaking, yeah. But that also might mean that hotter is drier. So you may need to make it coarser. It really depends on the situation in the day. Your grind will also affect your shop extraction. One of the things that will affect your grind is if you don't have this chamber full up above this curvature here. The reason behind that is because the blades, which are sitting down here, need a certain amount of pressure to maintain the same grind throughout the day. So it's important that you keep your hopper full, at least from this point, upwards. So, dosing the coffee, one of the most important things to remember is to dump out the excess from your old shot and then in here, most of the time, there's going to be a little bit of residue from either coffee or some moisture, like around here. So what we need to do is wipe the inside of that with a tea towel. So we start fresh. Okay? Mountains and valleys. This is a double basket. This is a single basket. So we use a mountain for the double. And we use a valley for the single. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Pulling the lever forward, we dose the coffee into the basket. We want to make sure that we're over pronouncing the amount of coffee that we're putting in there, like so. We want to make sure around the edges, each edge is being touched. Why? So we've got an even amount of coffee across the whole basket. Oh. Now what we do is we introduce the edge of the portafilter to the top of the grinding chamber. Using my index finger, I'm going to put the bottom of my finger on this side and the other top end of my finger on the other side and brush slowly across like that and what I'm doing is making a mountain. Now for the valley, same principle. Overdose the coffee, make sure that it's even all the way around. Introduce the portable filter to the top of the do dosing chamber and I basically convex my finger and scoop a shallow amount of coffee out of the bottom, making a valley. Chamber dosing is where I use each of these individual chambers to drop down a specific amount of coffee 
into the porta filter each time I pull the handle forward. So for a double, I'd need to pull the handle forward three times. For a single, I'd need to pull it forward twice. But there's one crucial thing to remember here. If each of those chambers are not full, you're not going to get a full dose every time. So it will change. Now this method is most often used during busy periods when you've got a half or near half full chamber of coffee. So let me demonstrate. One, two, three. That's a double. You tap that. For a single, pull it forward twice. Like so. Level dosing uses a slightly different principle. But basically, you need to dose the coffee into the porta filter and then level straight across. I'll only show you once because it's the same principle for each. Dose the coffee into the porta filter, overdose it with the straight finger, straight across. A single basket level should be between 12 and 14 grams. The weight for a mountain dose for a double shot should be around about 21 grams. So how about I have a go dosing and you tell me what I'm doing right and wrong? Sure, here we go. Hey, let me stop you there. For a start, if you have a look in the corners here, or well, the corners, on the edges, you'll see there's a bit of a gap. Now if you rolled over and tried to make a mountain out of that, there'd still be a gap on the side so the biscuit wouldn't be even once you'd tempt it. So put it back in, have another go. That's better. Okay, let me stop you there. You've got kind of a mountain, but it's more of a slope. So what you need to do is, opposed to being quite so flicky, and you need to basically create more of an even mountain as opposed to the slope that you're doing. So nice and smooth across. You should have the base of your, fi base of your finger touching this edge and the top of your finger touching the other edge. So put that back in, make sure it's nice and clean. Have another go. Hang on. Now, there's only one problem. If you put this inside there, there's quite a good chance that there's going to be excess moisture which will drip from the bottom of the spouts. So it's important that you leave that there. Resting it's fine, but just make sure that the spouts are outside the dosing chamber. Okay? Yep. As you were. That looks really good. Now you're ready to tamp. Should we talk about tamping? Sure. There's a few different things that we need to consider before we start the tamping process. I'll just put this back in here for a minute. Now, tamper. The way you hold your tamper is pretty important. So I'll explain to you what I think is the most ideal method. Holding the top of the tamper into the back of your palm, then putting your thumb down to the side of the tamper, and then wrapping your fingers around. So what I'm doing is I'm holding it nice and steady. The pressure is going to come from the back of my palm. Okay? What I'm doing as well is making sure that I've got a straight line from my thumb all the way up my elbow. So when I'm pushing on top of the basket, there's going to be a straight line from the tamper all the way up to my elbow. Now, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, holding the tamper as I mentioned. Pressing down. Now you see what I've done here? I've got a straight line going straight up over the top of the basket, up to my elbow, and then across to my shoulder, which is doing all the work. Now, if I was holding the tamper differently, for example like this, or like this, as a lot of people tend to do, they'll end up causing themselves an injury after repetitive motion, because they're holding it with the pressure coming from their wrist or their elbow. So, straight up, push once, 
push twice, polish the top of the coffee like that without any pressure on top of the coffee. Now it's important here to make sure that this is nice and level, okay? So it's running at 90 degrees to the Porterfield's basket. If we don't have it level, let's say for example I've got it crooked, I'll just exaggerate this just to show you what I'm talking about. So if we have it like this, what will happen is we'll have water which will extract through the coffee will run too fast through this side which is thin and too slowly through this side which is thick. Now that might mean that the coffee will come out and look okay and come out at the right time but two wrongs don't make a right. Know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. It's important to polish because what we're trying to do is create a nice even seal across the top of the coffee. However it's important that we don't push at the same time as we polish because there are two things that can happen. One, when you push and you twist at the same time, you're creating pressure on your elbow and your wrist as we discussed before. The other reason is because when you push and polish at the same time, you can displace the coffee that's inside the basket which can cause the channeling. Channeling is where we've created a gap around the edge of the coffee. And that's something we really want to avoid because when we're engaging the porter filter into the group head, we're going to have water which will be under pressure. Now that water under pressure is going to try and find the quickest way to get from the top of the coffee down to the spout. There are two things that can make this happen. One is by tapping the basket, and the other one is by polishing the coffee with pressure, which can displace the coffee. So why is it important not to tap? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first one is, if you tap, you're going to start denting the side of your porter filter, and you're going to start denting the side of your tamper. But the most important one when it comes to coffee is to make sure that we're not creating a channel around the edge of the coffee basket. So Amy, I mean, can you tell me some other things that people get wrong? Yep, sure. It's quite common for people to do this. We tamp, we tamp, we polish as we discussed, now they put it into the machine. Only problem is, you've still got a lot of grind left on your lugs, which are these little wing bits here, and on the top of the basket. So what you want to do is try and get rid of those as best you, best you can, then you're ready to engage into the machine. Otherwise, you end up putting a lot of grind underneath and inside the machine, which can make it quite dirty quite quickly. Now that we've learned a thing or two about tamping, do you want to have a go yourself? Yeah. Okay. I've got a set of scales here, and the idea of that is to be able to see, uh -uh, for me to be able to see how much pressure you're putting when you're tamping. The idea is that you're supposed to be able to feel how much pressure you're putting on when you're tamping down. We want you to be getting around around the 10 kilo mark. Okay, have a go. Okay, let me stop you there. Now before we talked about hold, how you hold the tamper. So what we want to do is get you holding the tamper nice and straight so you're not crooking your arm. Because if you crook your arm like this and you're repetitively pushing down, making coffee, as you will if you're making coffee in a cafe, you'll injure your wrist and you'll injure your elbow as well. What you need to be doing is having a straight line going from the tamper through your thumb all the way up to your elbow so the pressure is coming from your shoulder not from your elbow or your wrist, okay? Yep. Do you want to have another go? Sure do. That's good. One more. Spot on.